Hi guys, Sean here from StudyClicks, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Theorem 19, which states that the angle at the center of a circle standing on a given arc is twice the angle at any point of the circle standing on the same arc. So this is one of those theorems that's quite wordy as far as the definition goes, but uh, the underlying meaning is actually pretty simple. So first of all, we're just going to draw a circle. So as you can see, we've drawn a circle here, and we've also drawn uh, two lines connecting two different points on the edge of the circle to the center and we've created an arc in doing so. So in this case, the arc is the distance on the circle between the two points, or uh, this distance in here along the curved edge. And the last thing to do here is to uh, show what this theorem means is just to select any other point on the circle now. Uh, so we're just going to select this point up here at the top, and we're going to join this point uh, to our two original points which have created the arc. Like so. And if we call this angle we've created up here at the top x, what this theorem states is simply that the angle at the center of the circle standing on the arc is 2x. So this angle is twice as big as the angle above it. And that's all we mean by this theorem. But there's actually going to be a few corollaries as well. And a corollary is just uh, something that follows on from the theorem. So if we know a theorem is true, a corollary is something that's also true because the theorem is true. So you can think of corollaries almost like consequences of a theorem. And the first corollary here states that all angles at the at points of the circle standing on the same arc are equal. So if we go back to our circle now, what is meant by this is that the position of the first angle doesn't matter along the circle. And if we have multiple uh, angles standing on the same arc, they're all going to be half the angle of the, uh, the angle at the center of the circle, I should say. So just to demonstrate that visually, uh, as you can see, we've drawn another angle now connecting uh, the same two points of the arc to another point on the circle. And this angle in here is also the value X. So all this uh, corollary means is that it doesn't matter where we position this angle on the circle, it's going to be half the value of the angle at the center. So now to move on to corollary three, uh, this states that each angle in a semicircle is a right angle. So if we just draw a circle to help us demonstrate this, and we just divide this circle in two. If you consider the arc in question now, which is this pink arc along the outside, uh, the angle created by this joining this arc to the center is simply 180 degrees, which is this angle in here. But just because the angle at the center of the circle is a straight line, it uh, doesn't mean that the theorem in general isn't true. So we can join uh, the points on the outside of our arc on either side of the circle to any point, any other point on the circle. like so, and uh, this angle we've created now in here is always going to be 90 degrees because this satisfies the same conditions as our theorem originally did. Uh, this is just the specific case when we have 180 degrees because as we know a semicircle involves a straight line which is 180 degrees and uh, yeah that proves it for corollary 3. Corollary 4 states that if the angle standing on a chord BC at some point of the circle is a right angle then BC is a diameter. So if we draw another circle once again, and we have this chord BC, let's say we take some other point on the circle, maybe up, up here somewhere, and we just join this point to both B and C. Like this, uh, what this theorem states is that if this angle in here is in fact a right angle, then we can say that BC is a diameter and it passes through, of course, given that it is a diameter, uh, the center of the circle, so that would be somewhere in here roughly. Uh, but the point being that, uh, if, just like for corollary 3, uh, we've created a semicircle by dividing the circle with BC, uh, which is the same thing as BC being the diameter, then the angle at the point of the circle being a right angle means that the implication works both ways. So this is also true for corollary 4. And finally, for corollary 5, we're told that if ABCD is a cyclic quadrilateral, then the opposite angles sum to 180 degrees. So this is the last thing that follows on from our original theorem. And I'm quickly just going to draw one more circle. And now we're going to draw a cyclic quadrilateral inside this circle, which means that uh, we're going to take four points on the circle and basically join them. So uh, here we have our cyclic quadrilateral. And uh, just in case it wasn't clear, a cyclic quadrilateral is any four sided shape that fits inside a circle, uh, where each point of the quadrilateral or each corner is 
uh, a point on the circle essentially. So in this case, what we're told is that the opposite angles in this cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees, uh, meaning that, let's say we took this angle over here, uh, this angle, which we'll call A, uh, plus this angle, which we'll call B, uh, add up to 180 degrees. So A plus B is equal to 180. And if we imagine uh, this angle over here is called C, uh, C plus this angle here we'll call D would also be 180 degrees. And this is true for any cyclic quadrilateral. So even if we move these points around anywhere on the circle, uh, this is always going to be true. And that's it for corollary 5. And that is it for this theorem and all the corollaries which follow it. I hope that was easy enough to follow and that you learned something from this video. And I'll see you next time.